Good evening. The project I'm presenting is, uh, it's a commercial building at the end of the day. It's a project which is uh, in Pala. Um, the brief was uh, quite simple. Um, it, they needed an office and a showroom and uh, orientation front center for their products. So the products are basically building material related products. So um, they wanted to have a lot of storage for their materials also. So it is a simple brief, but I was thinking how to uh, make it uh, more interesting. And uh, in, they also wanted the flexibility of you know making the building work whichever way they want in a later stage where they uh, if they wanted to because they are into this building business they they have. Uh, uh, um, various places of uh, keeping the materials. If, if required, this can become a completely office or a, com or a commercial place. And uh, so that flexibility was also required. So, uh, so uh, my first uh, attempt was to, you know, as an architect, you know, I wanted to make it very uh, plush and everything. But seeing this, the client kind of reacted a little badly. <laughs> okay, so. Their thing is that the, um, uh, you know, the client. Maybe I'm not understanding the end user. The end users are the plumbers and the contractors who come to buy materials from them, and this will intimidate them. So that is a lesson which I learned from them. Okay, and uh, this I just moved on and went to a design which was uh, he wanted a you know rectangular kind of a form and everything. And uh, so we kind of worked backwards again, started all over again, and came up with a building which is uh, it's the social responsibility part of it when I talk about. It is basically coming from one is responsibility towards the client and the end user. Second is using the materials which are required, uh, which are socially and uh, responsible in uh, the kind of footprint that we are using. and. Uh, uh, the see so if you look at the plan, the, also the orientation of the building. The basically it is facing two roads. So um, uh, those are the east and the south side facing uh, elevations, which which is uh, premium elevations, which I can't, uh, which I need to keep. Whereas the west side, which is on that side, I've blocked it off completely with the toilet positionings and the. Uh, the staircase and such, and the office space which they were going to use will be it's on the north side. So that my intention was to keep it as uh, energy efficient as possible, and mostly flexible in nature. So, so uh, this is the rendering of the final product. Uh, the uh, the idea is to have um, to showcase the materials in the inside as well as the outside uh, all the materials they are dealing with as uh, dealers and distributors um, so we've used uh, these uh, agri bio panels which are uh, hemp based products and uh, there's a product indoor wood which is uh, again a compressed wood substitute and uh, ferro cement for the walls um, and uh, cement boards and flooring is all concrete and uh, highly polished concrete floors. Uh, so coming back to the uh, plans, the plan is extremely simple, uh, modular, so that any point they can open up and make it into another um, each of these uh, when, uh, distributors might need their own space to showcase their products. So all that will get a front facade. Right now, most of it is used as storage. Um, the, the first floor is predominantly just storage now, although it is built for uh, to be converted into an office at any point of time. Um, the second floor as well, and then the terrace floor contains the solar panels and everything, which also is a usable area. Now, coming to the what we have achieved uh, in terms of uh, uh, keeping the building cool without any air conditioning, the office spaces. I just wanted it. Uh, I had to convince a client in a way that see they they have been working from an office which was air conditioned. I told them we will take care of air conditioning. We don't need air conditioning, 
so uh, they my office is also non air conditioned so they they kind of believed in me and then um, we basically worked on a passive cooling system whereas see if you see the there's that coat in with water in it so there is a pipe uh, large as a concrete pipe which is going under the water which cools air to intake air into this area which is like a closed thing okay, that is a completely closed area which is the office area with a double height going there and uh, so then, then there's a tunnel going to the, the roof there and that the roof gets heated and then the entire uh, movement of air is circulated like that to passively cool the area inside. So that is the front area where the, well, the air comes out from. So in section, this is how it works. So there is a tunnel. So the double light area is also part of the closed office area and then uh, it is ventilated with the with naturally with the heating from the east side the morning sun heats up the tunnel and the top glazing so that kind of uh, creates a suction and from the cool air which is taking in from under the water it uh, circulates and there is no air conditioning in the main areas so also um, reducing what we cons what we consume all the walls in this building are uh, using ferrous cement technology in c2 um, where uh, it's basically a process of plastering, over plastering uh, on GIY mesh and with insulation. So instead of a nine inch wall, we end up with a two and a half inch wall. So uh, that's a lot of so, uh, material saved right there. And that is still has a value. Um, the uh, heat intake is also similar or less than what is from a regular uh, brick wall. And uh, we also are uh, completely um, water sufficient with rainwater for that is probably um, a first for a commercial building so we have calculated the uh, rainfall data and constructed the tank accordingly when, again using ferro cement technology so it works out to some 4 rupees a liter so uh, this is something which uh, we try to do in a lot of our projects um, so, and then the material palette is mostly based on what uh, is green certified and other things to minimize the use of uh, tiles and everything. We've gone with uh, flooring, which is concrete, um, the cement boards, mud plaster, those agribio panels made of hemp, art line, the glass pavers, which are 50% open for parking areas and the ferro cement and the natural flora for the entire property, it's not just in, inside gardens, outside plant, uh, trees also, everything is a natural material, flora species itself. And uh, we are uh, completely solar, uh, we actually produce um, about 65 kilowatt of solar per day, whereas our usage is only about 25, the rest is connected to the grid, and um, completely run on rainwater harvesting so much so that the client who stays next door, their house is also supplied. They use the same water. And uh, no lights are required in the uh, building through normal working hours. Uh, passive cooling, no air conditioning required. Um, all eco-certified building products, fully accessible wheelchair by wheelchair in all the floors. And the low boundary wall to keep the surroundings safe so that it is the entire neighborhood is conceived as safe. And so uh, we went with uh, this to uh, the IGBC Council and uh, we got a platinum rating, which is the highest rating for any uh, commercial building, uh, service building in India. Uh, and uh, this is the highest commercial service building in Kerala as well. So uh, the interiors are all made with, uh, all the furniture, everything is made with the same uh, uh, certified products. Flooring is concrete. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Let's be kindly move on to the Q and A session.
Hello. Yeah. Um, it's very nice of you to have shown that first slide as the takeoff point. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how does that change of heart happen from A to B? Yeah, it is. I had to bite the bullet basically. <laughs> you know, as an architect, our first Im impulse is to you know design. Whereas, you know, they need to be brought back to the ground saying that this is what we want. And I kind of didn't understand the client, end user understanding maybe. I thought, okay, making it more... So, uh, my <laughs> point actually yeah. was that the first image you showed hmm. uh, did not talk about sustainability. No, no, it talked about sustainability, but I am also talking about... But in terms of materials, it did not. No, materials, yes, we were using all the materials, like the, their products also, you wanted to showcase... No, in the first plan... The first slide also, if you... Uh, I can go back Those there, steel pipes and... Those are not steel, they, they are also dealers of supreme uh, pipes and... Uh, so, so, those were non-structural? No, those are non-structural. Yeah, that was the point I was trying to yeah. make. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so th this whole thing about, you know, I like the way uh, uh, to kind of uh, be able to resurrect yourself into something and then going the whole hog to make a building that would, you know, get the green rating. So that is something that yes, came as a huge a surprise to me. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, uh, pulling that off was important as a project. Um, one question I had about the water and the uh, upward draft of warm air that you, you know, structured within the building looking to the volume of the const uh, volume that it has to handle just in terms of uh, cubic meters mm. um, the scale of the water body and the inlet of the amount of water uh, of air that it would pull out and several other points from where there was capability of the air to move up so how was that actually presented as a viable calculation was the question I had. I did not do a calculation, but it is not, uh, there is no air escape. It is all, the entire sealed thing in. is sealed on the ground floor. That entire office area is sealed and the double height is also sealed in the first floor area. Okay. So that acts as a tunnel and then from the first floor it gets sucked out. It is okay, and then humidity is dealt with only by sealing fans yes, uh, through only evaporative yeah, loss. Yeah, that's it. So they are working there comfortably so far. I mean, yeah. they've not asked for any air conditioning. So. Yeah, because uh, the term that you use when the water, uh, that water body and the air that you take in is mm. a kind of a you're creating a water body which is actually working like a heat exchanger. Yeah. To yes. get uh, lower the temperature of the ambient air that you're pulling from outside. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to pass through that water. Pass under so the water and yes. uh, also the courtyard is also kept outside of this. Uh, office area, so that the humidity from the water is not also coming into the... True, uh, true, true. So the yeah. ambient temperature of the air and the ambient temperature of the water is the same? Yes, yeah, more or less. I mean, uh, there might be one or two degrees difference because the air passes through whereas the water stays there. But the water is definitely three, four degrees cooler than the air right. around it. So because yeah. of the evaporative loss yeah. over yeah. it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank